So, set. All right. Now, okay. I don't even ask, ask why. That's, you know, I mean, it's too obvious. <laughs> Now, okay, so let me just find what we're going to be looking at today. If I can just X out of certain tabs, the story of an hour PDF here and gorgeous okay I'm going to go in my channel to just see if I did not ooh beautiful now before we get into it I'm going to talk about something that is currently, at the moment, kind of irritating. And that is the fact that set. That is the fact Okay, I could go through this all day long, but I'm not going to go through this all day long. Alrighty, now. I made a video about this, but I've decided to extend it. You know what? Let's just move on. But you know, I'm sure that it'll come up again, and I'll want to talk about it. You know, if I had pushed myself to talk about it, I'm not going to do it. So, I'm going to be reading the story of an hour, and you're going to be seeing a lot of posts on my Facebook page about short stories and explaining. Um, you, you know, analyzing those stories. So I did one today, and I'm going to be doing another one, hopefully, tomorrow. Now, this is the story of an hour by Kate Chopin. Chopin. It says... Knowing that Miss Millard was afflicted with a heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible the news for her husband's death. It was her sister Josephine who told her, in broken sentences, 
veiled hints that revealed in half concealing. Her husband's friend Richards was there too near her. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when intelligence of the railroad disaster was received with Brentley Millard's name leading the list of killed. He had only taken the time to assure himself of its truth by a second telegram and had hastened to forestall any less careful, less tender friend in bearing the sad message. She did not hear the story as many women have heard the same with a paralyzed inability to accept its significance. She wept at once with sudden wild abandonment in her sister's arms. When the storm of grief had spent itself, she went away to her room alone. She would have no one to follow her. There stood, facing the open window, a comfortable, roomy armchair. Into this she sank, pressed down by a physical exhaustion that haunted her body and seemed to reach into her soul. She could see in the open square before her house the tops of trees that were all a quiver with the new spring life. The delicious breath of rain was in the air. In the street below, a peddler was crying his wares. The notes of a distant song, which someone was singing, reached her faintly, and countless sparrows were twittering in the eaves. There were patches of blue sky showing here and there through the clouds, that had met and piled one above the other in the west facing her window. She sat with her head sewn back upon the cushion of the chair, quite motionless except when a sob came up into her throat and shook her as a child who has cried itself to sleep continues to sob in its dreams. She was young with a fair, calm face whose lines bespoke repression and even a certain strength. But now there was a dull stare in her eyes, whose gaze was fixed away off yonder on one of those patches of blue sky. It was not a glance of reflection, but rather indicated a suspension of intelligent thought. There was something coming to her, and she was waiting for it, fearfully. What was it? She did not know it. It was too subtle and elusive to name. But she felt it, creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the sense, the color that filled the air. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize this thing that was approaching to possess her, and she was striving to beat it back with her will. As powerless as her two white slender hands would have been. When she abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under her breath, free, free, free. The vacant stare and the look of terror that had followed it went from her eyes. They stayed keen and bright. Her pulses beat fast and the cursing, coursing blood warmed and relaxed every inch of her body. She did not stop to ask if it were or were not a monstrous joy that held her. A clear and exalted perception enabled her to dismiss the suggestion as trivial. She knew that she would weep again, and when she saw the kind, tender hands folded in 
depth, the face that had never looked save with love upon her, fixed and gray and dead. But she saw beyond that bitter moment a long procession of years to come that would belong to her absolutely. And she opened and spread her arms out to them in welcome. There would be no one to live for her during those close coming years. She would live for herself. There would be no powerful will bending hers in that blind persistence which with shish shish men and women before they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. A kind intention or a cruel intention made the act seem no less a crime as she looked upon it in that brief moment of illumination. And yet she had loved him. Sometimes, often, she had not. What did it matter? What could love, the unsolved mystery, count for hen face of the position or self-assertion which she suddenly recognized as the strongest impulse of her being? Free, body and soul free, she kept whispering. Josephine was kneeling before the closed door with her lips to the keyhole, imploring for admission. Louise, open the door, I beg, open the door, you will make yourself ill. What are you doing, Louise? For heaven's sake, open the door. Go away. I'm not making myself ill. No, she was drinking in a very elixir of life through that open window. Her fancy was running riot along those days ahead of her. Spring days and summer days and all sorts of days that would be her own. She breathed the quick prayer that life might be long. It was only yesterday she had thought with a shudder that life might be longer than she expected. She arose at length and opened the door to his sister's importunities. There was a feverish triumph in her eyes, and she carried herself unwittingly like a goddess of victory. She clasped her sister's waist, and together they descended the stairs. Richard stood waiting for them at the bottom. Soon, one was opening the front door with a latch key. It was Brentley, Millard, who entered, a little travel stained, composedly carrying his grip sack and umbrella. He had been far from the scene of accident and did not even know there had been one. He stood amazed at Josephine's piercing cry, at Richard's quick motion to screen him from the view of his wife, but Richard's was too late. When the doctors came, they said she had died of heart disease, of abuse that kills. That is the story. Okay. Oh, e -e. Okay. So, um, you know, actually that last line was a joy that kills. All right. Now, anyway, that was the story. So, I'm not going to, you know, this live stream is done. I, you know, oh, but it's not done. I, I, like, like I'm not gonna force myself. I, 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 I am done pushing for, for. I, I am done wanting. I, I'm done pushing to want to do something. I'm done. I'm done doing that. Because I may regret it later if it doesn't feel to. Oh. I did not click the right um page. 
I would highly, highly encourage you, if you see anything about Oracle Pool as a virtual, to not watch it and choose something else. Okay, so, so, so you need to do this because all it's going to make for is you not wanting to, um, you wanting to do something that you can't do, basically. Okay. Who knows how that's filmed? Probably these shouldn't be. But then again, it's kind of hard to tell. Not interested. It's probably fine. Join me. No, don't recommend that channel. All right. I am training the AIs of YouTube. I hope that they get the message that I don't want to see a live stream that is done off of a feature that you only ha have if you have 1K subscribers or more. So that's why I'm going through these channels and removing um, certain channels. This one's probably a phone one too. Okay. Now, what was I going to do? Oh, yes. Maybe in the future, courses should be on like, you know, Facebook groups. It would be really, really neat if they did, if they had Facebook groups. Because there's so many Facebook groups. All right. Um, so you'll see some posts up there. Um, you know, you'll definitely see some upcoming posts having to do with music and literature. Just fair warning. So, courses... Um, okay, here we go. Um, kind of wish this was off of Facebook. <laughs> um, honestly, because, um, I mean, I am on Facebook. And I honestly have to tell you, Facebook is above any kind of class page. It really is. If I was an instructor, you know what? I'd be Maverick. I'd set up my own Facebook group and do it that way. So, let's just see what um, we need to do here. So, reading, compare the story, da 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 Verbal irony, dramatic irony. What types of irony can you identify in this story? Look at the last sentence of the story. So, if we're looking at the last sentence of the story, I, I just want to, can't believe I'm doing this, South Node Gemini kind of intellation, I want to say. Um, oh, it's the right story. Okay, the last sentence. Sit. <laughs> That's the gremlin again saying, oh, you don't have the right story. Well, yes, I do. When the doctors came, they, they, um, when the doctors came, they said she had died of heart disease, of joy that kills. Oh, well, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? Joy does not kill. I mean, 
you kind of have to get technical about joy. Joy over scheming or abusing somebody is not joy. I mean, it is a form of joy. But if it comes back around in such a negative and, you know, where you feel feel like, well, uh, you know, one day looking back at your life, well, well, I really, really regret doing that. Okay. So. Now, what I'm going to do is go here. I can't believe I'm doing, no, I don't need to do this again. Um, yeah. Okay. Knowing that, please, okay, go to the last line of the story. I just want to see if, um, if the end has something about joy. Of joy that, can, oh, beautiful. Okay, it is the same story. All right. So, obviously there is some irony in that last sentence of joy that kills. Um... Oh, again, I'm not going to force myself to do anything I don't want to do. So, that is all for now. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and uh, um, bye for now.